thank you so much for taking time to be here. We appreciate um, all of you that are going to be speaking today and all of you that have been supporters of the conversion campaign and also the press that has uh, come to join us. I am Lisa Savage. I uh, organize the Maine Natural Guard campaign. Uh, Maine Natural Guard campaign is really a simple pledge that many, many people have now taken. If you haven't and you'd like to, the, there's a clipboard out front on the table. It's essentially to say, when people are talking about national security, make sure that you bring up about climate catastrophe, because that is the real national security um, issue of our day. And when people are talking about climate catastrophe, make sure you bring up about the Pentagon and their giant carbon boot print, which was not counted under the Kyoto Protocols, and that is why a lot of people are not aware of the Pentagon's contribution to the climate uh, emergency that we are in. So that is a, a very simple pledge that you can take if you want to, and I think today's uh, news conference is an extension of that work, so I'm very, very pleased to have such a great lineup of speakers to share their thoughts. We are going to um, be lucky enough to hear from Barry Dana. Barry Dana is a, a chief of the Penobscot Nation. Uh, they call their chiefs chief, even after they have retired from that role, as Barry now has. Barry is an organic farmer and an educator in uh, the right way to live on the earth, uh, as according to the teaching of his ancestors. He, I'm lucky to have him and his wife and now daughter and her husband as neighbors in Solon, Maine, so he's come a pretty long way to be here with us today. Uh, please join me in welcoming Barry Dana. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Barry Dana, former chief. Um, current chief, actually, <laughs> with the responsibilities I still uh, take on myself. I'm Wabanaki. That's this land's first people, indigenous people. I was asked to come here today to talk about the native perspective and how we live with the earth. And that message that I bring, I was given from my, my elders, who are now ancestors. And it's very simple. Love the earth. Treat the earth as you treat your own mother. And I hope you treat your mother as well. <laughs> because if you're treating your mother like the earth, we're in trouble. Do no harm to the earth, for that harm shall fall upon you and future generations. This message is probably more important now than it was then. It got me on the right path, but now that message has to be delivered to everyone so we all are on the right path. We're living today as though we have infinite resources, infinite growth, and that is unsustainable. If we're simply asked by the Creator, by our mother, to do no harm, then we're failing. Why? Because of greed, because of war, war for oil, just for our entitled little lifestyles that we all live. It's time to stop the fighting. It's time to recreate that's my word, instead of convert. Recreate. So we're creating. We have to start anew. We have to return to ways in which are sustainable with the planet. Living in balance is simply living local. We spend trillions of dollars annually on conflicts around the world. Why can't those trillions be dedicated towards solving those problems where every country, every person can live locally? Do your own food, do everything yourself, do everything ourselves as a country. If we want America to be great, we need to make the world great. So let's start here, let's start now. Let's continue this path to make the world sustainable, healthy, so that we make a planet for future generations, one that works for all of us, all my relations. Thank you, Barry. Words of wisdom, indeed. Um, our next speaker I'm very excited to introduce is a, I guess, an eighth grader now, right? Um, at the Friends School here in Portland. She's the leader of Youth Climate Strikes Movement here in the state of Maine. And I'm happy to welcome Anna Siegel. Hello, my name is Anna Siegel, and I am newly 13 years old. <laughs> Most kids celebrate this. Wow, they say, I'm finally a teenager. I did that too. However, my next thought was, wow, only 11 years, 
not 12 years for me anymore. I hope you all know what I am referring to. October 2018, the International Panel on Climate Change released a report, a flashing siren. It stated that we, humanity, have 12 years to put the brakes on catastrophic carbon emissions. When I blew out my 13 candles, the clock in my head ticked forward one less year. That is what I believe climate insecurity is. Across our world, food insecurity is a real issue. Thousands of people don't know when their next meal is or how they'll pay for it. Now, climate insecurity is a growing problem. Youth worldwide don't know how long they'll have a healthy planet or what the future holds. That is scary, and as a child, I know that firsthand. Campaigns like this effort to convert Bath Ironworks are what alleviates these fears and bring light to what can be difficult activism. We are working on a local solution to the climate crisis that is global impacts. Next year, when I blow out my birthday candles, I hope I think about the progress we've made, not how time is running out. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Very, very moving words. Um, next, I'm very thrilled to welcome, because I wasn't sure he was going to be able to make it, but he has rearranged his schedule to be with us. Luke Sakira, who may have started as a climate activist here in Maine at an even younger age than Anna, because I think I first became aware of Luke when he was nine years old, standing up to Nestle in Freiburg, Maine. <laughs> right about that? Well, he's a teenager now, too, and he is, uh, has been at the Seeds of Peace um, and also working, continuing to work with Community Water Justice. Very excited to welcome Luke Sakira. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Do I just start? Okay. <laughs> As the climate crisis unfolds and escalates before us, we need to accept responsibility for our roles in the problem in order to change our behavior patterns. We must also put significant pressure on industrial polluters to hold them accountable and use their capital investments to reimagine their destructive business models as soon as possible. The military industrial complex is among the largest polluters in the United States, and Bath Ironworks here in Maine is a significant part of it. Considering how much the United States spends on national defense, I know that we have the resources necessary to commit to converting the practices of industrial centers such as Bath Ironworks into environmentally sustainable ones. We are owed a shift in direction especially as the growing climate crisis poses a national security threat. Besides the loss of life, what will the carbon footprint of yet another war be? Will another Zumwalt give us clean air and water? I work hard at trying not to be afraid and withdrawn in the face of what the future holds for us youth. As the prospect of another war in the Middle East grows, I fear the many consequences that will follow in death toll and environmental destruction. Our military appears to be failing us, not protecting us. Iran is not the problem. U.S. imperialism and, is Amer and America's on ongoing quest for oil and other resources is. Then again, what can we expect from a government that spends 10 <coughs> times more on fossil fuel subsidies than on education? We need to stop investing in this war culture and start investing in our youth and restoration of our planet. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now the lucky woman who uh, has been with Luke on his journey thus far, Nikki Sakara, is a community water justice leader here in Maine that many of you are aware of her work. And we're going to uh, welcome her to the podium now. Nikki. Is this working? Yeah. So I want to talk briefly about the myth of security being perpetuated here in the United States. Security can be defined as a state of being free from danger or threat. And in a country that boasts more than 800 military bases across the globe for the purposes of security, 
we could also claim the status as the largest contributor to our own national security threat, which is an increasing lack of clean air and clean water. We are no longer fighting our external enemies. We are fighting our own ghosts. Security can also be defined as something pledged or guaranteed, or as a repayment in the case of, de of a default. And in this case, we're here to collect on it. Just as bottled water is being sold as a false solution to our global water problems, we're being led to believe that half of our discretionary spending should continue to maintain a non-viable excess of dominion. So long as we embrace these deceptions, we will continue to endorse the continued destruction of the water and the air and the land that we all rely on. So let's imagine if Bath Ironworks were to use their skills, their technology, their workers to build and upgrade water infrastructure that we need in our own communities here, could we prevent giving up local control of our groundwater or public water systems to foreign corporations or private interests? This is an example of what we call a just transition, and it could help align Bath Ironworks own values as published on their own website, which includes being a good corporate citizen and supporting the environment. We are only as strong and as innovative as we can imagine. It is up to every one of us to put our imagines together and mobilize, as if, it is, as if everyone's lives depended on each action. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are very uh, happy to have many members of the Maine Green Independent Party here, as well as the National Green Party. And the first speaker that we're going to hear from is Justin Bepp. He is co-chair of the Green Party US. I believe he is also chair of the Portland, the chair of Portland Greens as well. Greens as well. And I'm very interested to hear what he has to say. And he'll be introducing our next illustrious guest that will come to the podium. Come on up, Justin. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, everybody, for coming here today um, to talk about this conversion of Bath Ironworks um, to peaceful, renewable energy production. Um, so at this point in time, um, since 2001, we've been at continuous war around the world. So that means for the entirety of Anna's life and the entirety of Lucas's life, you have known nothing but a time when U.S. has been at war around the world. Um, right now, we are on the verge of war with Iran, and it, that is being perpetrated by um, our government that thinks that we need to protect um, shipping channels to send oil around or basically secure our oil future here in the U.S. We do not need this oil. If we truly invested in a climate conver a conversion of Bath Ironworks to renewable energy production, we would then have the means to say, no, we don't need that oil. We don't need to protect those shipping lanes. Let's get out of those wars. Let's invest in the future of children like Lucas and all the children here in the US. It is time that we really stood up for Mainers and for Americans that don't want war. It is, we've had enough of it. Um, it is time for our government to really respect the needs of the people. The majority of Americans want a Green New Deal. The Green Party brings about a Green New Deal that is, promises to end these wars. And the, the idea of this Bath Ironworks conversion is the first step on that path to a Green New Deal that we so very much need. Um, we have an opportunity here in Maine um, to live by our motto, dear ago, I lead. We can be the leaders on a Green New Deal here in Maine to end war and produce the renewable energy that we need for a sustainable future. Thank you very much for being here and being in this fight with all of us. And I'd like to introduce the next speaker, yes, um, two-time presidential uh, candidate for the Green Party. Um, she has done so much and um, outside of her running for president, still being such an advocate for peace and uh, a, a new future for our children. Um, I'd like to bring to the podium Jill Stein. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Justin, and thank you, Lisa, for organizing this. And just thank you all for being a part of this amazing community that really is leading the charge for an America and a world that works for all of us. We deserve nothing less. And I'm going to pick up on the theme that the conversion or recreation or whatever we want to call this at Bath Ironworks, that this really should be the launching pad for the Green New Deal. Um, you probably know because people have heard a lot about it recently, and it was the centerpiece of our presidential campaigns in 2012 and 2016. And I think it's really a sign of that we're not just changing the debate, we're winning the debate because <laughs> that, among a bunch of other things, have all been taken up now by a lot of progressive candidates. And I think this is a real good sign. Um, but that Green New Deal would create 100% clean renewable energy uh, by 2030, which is basically what the science tells us that we need to do. This is an emergency program, and we should settle for no nothing less. And what's proposed for Bath Ironworks really ought to be the beginning of that. Um, it's not only a solution to the climate crisis, it's also a solution to our broken economy, which is failing so many Americans. 80% of Americans are living um, paycheck to paycheck. Nearly half of Americans are in or near poverty. Uh, lacking adequate health care, and an entire generation is locked into debt. S and the workers at Bath Iron Works are actually in the target hairs as well, and have had to sacrifice gains in um, wages and pension benefits, have lost health care uh, in their last contract in order to be so-called competitive in order to attract these, um, uh, these contracts. And in fact, you know, the workers they are victims of this economy that forces us into militarization, you know, which is really, you know, it's, it's the order of the day. It's this great um, elephant in the room that we're all being tunneled into kind of a military mindset. We're all being occupied here. And the Green New Deal is essentially, uh, it's, it's a revolution for our economy, for our climate, and it makes the wars for oil obsolete. And the workers at uh, Bath Ironworks, at one time were leaders uh, in this call for conversion. And you know, a variety of things have happened, and it would be wonderful to see if we could help repair that dialogue, because at one time, they really were leading the charge and demanding of their elected officials, our elected officials, that they fight for green contracts with the same vigor with which they fight for these, uh, these war contracts, which really serve none of us as um, many of you have been saying. So uh, at Bath Ironworks, they could be building the wind towers and, the, and then the high-speed trains and so on. Uh, and they could literally be beating our swords into plowshares, making us a part of the global community that really needs to uh, put down our weapons of war and fight the greatest uh, war that has ever faced mankind against climate change, this can be a moment to bring us together and to create the world that we deserve. Thank you all for being a part of it. Thank you, Dr. Stein. Excellent um, perspective on where we are and where we could be. Um, I'm pleased to uh, invite up the next speaker is a key part of our campaign, the conversion campaign. Uh, Robert Shetterly, most of you know, is a portraitist. His Americans Who Tell the Truth series has um, created lasting uh, artifacts, if you will, of many people, including Barry Dana's daughter, Molly, and was a recent one, Molly and Dana, who's now the tribal ambassador for the Penobscot Nation. Um, Rob has been finding Americans who will stand up and speak the truth to power and um, uh, creating a collection of their portraits for us for a while now. He's part of this campaign, and I'm really interested to hear what he's going to have to say to us. Come on up, Rob. <laughs> this isn't my time here. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Thank you all for being here, by the way. Um, I painted Bruce Gagnon's portrait a number of years ago, and we started, actually, he posed for it in, at one of these demonstrations right here uh, outside of Bath Ironworks. Marianne Wright Edelman said, what's wrong with our children? Adults telling children to be honest while they're lying and cheating. Adults telling children to not be violent while they're marketing and glorifying violence. I believe adult hypocrisy is the biggest problem that children face in America. She's making the point that violence introduced to children can purposely addict 
them to an adrenaline rush, can encourage anger whose expression is violence, can justify the creation of horrible weapons to punish our enemies while exciting us, can make the work of diplomats seem sentimental and weak, can focus attention on the excitement of explosions while dehumanizing the victims of explosions. But she is not really talking about the cynical work of an entertainment and gaming industry. She's talking about the cynical work of weapons makers using the entertainment and gaming industry to expand the business of death. We need whistleblowers from the defense industries, let's call them war profiteers speak out, <clears throat> to tell the truth about the war for profit lobby, the fear lobby, the revolving door lobby, the demonization of Arabs lobby, the exceptionalism lobby, the violence of capitalism lobby, the violence solves problems lobby, the peace encourages terrorist lobby. But this business of death is a boomerang. This country has flung that boomerang out at the world and now it's spinning back in the form of inevitable consequence, climate crisis. We've backed ourselves into a very profitable corner and we're sitting ducks for the boomerang of our own hubris. Militarism is not protecting us in a dangerous world, it's making a far more dangerous world. We are here today not asking for conversion, we're demanding it. We are not here to complain, as Van Jones said, Ma Martin Luther King didn't get famous saying, I have a complaint. <laughs> <clears throat> we're not here as Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Greens, or Socialists. We're here because we love. We love the Earth, all its species, its people, its children, its hope, creativity, compassion, and community. We will do what we need to do to protect these things. Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from one of the architects of this uh, conversion campaign, a man who, uh, with his partner, um, Mary Beth Sullivan, who will also speak, uh, f deliberately chose to live in Bath in order to talk to Bath iron workers, in order to uh, bring the demand to the shipyard that it convert to building something for life, not for death. And um, I'm very happy to have uh, Bruce Gagnon of the Global Network for, Against Nuclear Power and Weapons in Space. Against Nuclear Weapons and Power in Space. I always say it backwards. Thank you. You're not the only one in the world that messes <laughs> up. Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. Uh, um, a couple years ago, you might remember General Dynamics that owns Bath Iron Works <clears throat> asked the state of Maine for a $60 million tax break. And we organized a statewide campaign, 100 letters to the editor and 25 newspapers, protests, vigils at the, at the state house. And I also did a 37-day hunger strike. And on most of those days, I went to the shipyard at noon and in the afternoon during shift change. And I got to speak to a lot of workers. And I can tell you that there are many workers that are working there who said, we'd rather do something else. We'd rather build something that we're proud of. We don't feel so great. And most of them that said that were the younger guys. People that grew up in schools that were teaching them about climate catastrophe. And so they really, really understand the connection when we stand outside the gates with our, with our signs. The union, the biggest union, S6 union, machinist union at BIW, was under intense pressure by the politicians of the state to support that tax giveaway. And uh, because they wanted cover, they wanted to say, well, we had to do it because the workers want it, you know, we got to support the workers and everything else. So it was always our hope to neutralize the union. And early on, we went to the union, we shared with them our flyers, telling them that we were protesting not against them, but against this tax break, and we wanted conversion. And as it turned out, the union had an election. They, they had a, a vote. Uh, they invited the general membership to come, and the vote was 50-50. 50, 50. 50 in favor, 50 opposed, 50% 50 opposed. And so they couldn't take a position on that tax giveaway. And not one newspaper in the state of Maine reported that very important story. So I would submit to you that the workers 
at BIW are quite open to this message, and we must continue to deliver it. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce, um, for that uh, local perspective. Uh, next up, I'm very happy to um, welcome Mary Beth Sullivan, uh, PeaceWorks of Greater Brunswick. And the reason is that Mary Beth is kind of an expert on conversion as a theory. Uh, uh, she studied it for quite some time. I think the first person I ever learned about conversion from was Mary Beth Sullivan. So uh, thank you, Mary Beth, for taking time to be with us today in your busy job at Provo Street. <laughs> Put some pressure on here. Um, I want to thank Dana for the, the image of recreation. Uh, I think it's an important challenge to our campaign. Um, I want to thank Anna um, for creating a sense of urgency in this whole effort. I, um, I want you to want grandchildren. And that's not clear from your comments. Um, and I have to say, Lucas, um, I'm thrilled by your presentation, and I'm hoping that your articles are going to supersede mine in the conversion when someone um, writes, uh, wants to know more about war and conversion. Our vision is that government understands what the people already know, that the climate crisis is the true security problem that we, that we in the world must organize to confront. Um, our vision is that we wrestle our hard-earned tax dollars from the permanent war economy that we bring our scientists and engineers and social, just, social scientists together to create a path toward environmental survival for the 21st century, that we retool our weapons manufacturing plants and pay our neighbors to build an alternative energy infrastructure, and that we convert our National Guard to a natural guard. We, build, uh, we want to be building hospital and mercy ships that travel the world to support communities in their recovery and reconstruction from natural disasters. Does this sound impossible? No. Not if you look at history. During World War II, the government took over the US industrial base to build for war. Corporations that were building cars started building tanks. Silk underwear factories became um, parachute makers. The list goes on and on and on. It's entirely doable. When the country decided we needed to go to the moon, we didn't hesitate. We put the resources to make it happen. We even bulldozed towns to build the secret mission called the Manhattan Project, which, which gave us the scourge of nuclear weapons. We can accomplish what we put our ingenuity and our tax dollars toward creating. It's an opportunity for a new world order, international cooperation for survival of sentient beings, including humans. The youth of our world is so very clear what the real crisis is. Certainly, Anna and Lucas are. Let's listen to their vision and mobilize to make it happen. Um, I'm pleased to welcome to the podium next Dud Hendrick. He's a member of Veterans for Peace. He's been very active in the conversion campaign. And I know that he will have some rousing thoughts for us, possibly even about tomorrow's uh, worship celebration. Thank you, Lisa. We should take this workshop on the road. This is wonderful. <laughs> I wrote the other day of the fuel consumption of an aircraft carrier on which I was stationed in 1962. 100,000 gallons of fuel a day, 2 million gallons to steam across the Atlantic Ocean. One ship, 57 years ago. That was then, this is now. A fleet of warships larger than the next 13 largest combined. Part of the US military that has the largest carbon footprint on the planet. A few weeks ago, I attended a talk about Diego Garcia a remote island in the Indian Ocean. The presenter had been involved in the construction of the U.S. base there in the 1970s. When I asked him if he knew of the people who had been displaced for the, for the base, he explained that was a different time. Yes, that was then. Today, we launch bombing sorties nearly every day from Diego Garcia, and the people are still not permitted to return. Today, it is one, as we've heard, I think, Nikki inform us there are over 800 U.S. bases on foreign lands, all playing a role in the despoiling of the environment. From 1964 to 1973, the U.S. dropped 260 million cluster bombs on Laos, equivalent to a plane load of bombs every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, for nine years. Seven bombs for every man, woman, and child. That was then. This is now approximately 300 casualties per year in Laos. Guantanamo is now 
where 40 people are still detained, the vast majority who have never been charged with a crime. Fallujah is now, with the toxic legacy of the Iraq War and the shocking rates of infant mortality and inhuman disfigurement. Bikini Atoll is now still uninhabitable due to the atomic bomb testing. My allotted time permits me from going on and on, or denies me, prevents me from going on and on. It's all disgusting, a record of imperial behavior. Now we know the consequences of wanton disregard for our beloved planet are undeniable. Is there time for change? Not if we're to put our hopes in the hands of our elected officials. We've invited each of our congressional representatives to be here today. None are, not even a staffer. Tomorrow they will be at the christening. So will we, demanding conversion. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to welcome to the podium next a uh, member of 350 Maine. I, right now, I would like to uh, ask you to join me in welcoming Sue Pastor of 350 Maine. Thank you. My name is Sue Pastor, and I am humbled and I'm grateful to be able to be here to support the conversion campaign of Bath Ironworks. 350 Maine is a grassroots movement dedicated to solving the climate crisis. The amount of carbon in the atmosphere has surpassed 350 parts per million. <laughs> the scientifically proven safe level and the basis for our name due to destructive fossil fuels in the environment. In fact, the level is now over 400 parts per million and on track to approach 450 parts per million in the decade of 230 to 2030 to 2040. Such life-destroying elevations are associated with adverse weather events, with destruction of, the, of resources, increased negative social, political, and economic impacts, and instability and disruptions of many forms around the world. Based on current realities, what is predictable is great pain for many, a pain that could be avoided or at least minimized. 350 Maine is ultimately an optimistic group. <laughs> we are confident that people have the power to take effective action and to attend to the crisis. We have seen some of this in Maine and around the world. We have worked together in Maine to say no to polluting tar sands. Coming into Maine, we continue to grow renewable energy resources across the state, and we have just passed a Maine-based New Green Deal. Success requires action. Success requires sacrifice, as some people in this room have experienced. We need to stop, we need to change business as usual. We need to move on. <coughs> the intersection of jobs and the economy Militarism and violence and the climate and the health of the natural world is an undeniable opportunity for such action. In Maine, that interaction and opportunity is revealed at Bath Ironworks. There is tremendous skill, tremendous infrastructure, so much ability there. Such potential is limited by its current support of military development and ultimately puts all of us at even greater risk as much have, have shown conversion removes such limits. Ultimately, 350 is an organization of people saying yes. We call on all to join us with yes to a fair and equitable economy, to genuine safety, security, and freedom, to a life and work 
of dignity, truly caring for each other, insisting on sustainable value, insisting on nonviolent and peaceful existence. 350 Maine is proud to stand with the many brave people who are calling for the, in, in the past and in the present, and who in the future, namely tomorrow, to stand and to have the courage to peacefully protest against destruction and to insist that another world is possible. We call on everyone to join us in saying yes to a life of possibility, hope, and action. Please work with us to ensure a rapid and just and immediate conversion of Bath Ironworks to peaceful and environmentally supported, supportive business practices. Thank you. Our next speaker is a former Mainer um, who now lives in North Carolina, but he is a retired faculty member from the University of Southern Maine, one of my alma maters. And as an educator myself, I wanted to have an educator's voice here as part of the conversion campaign. So I'm very happy, happy to uh, welcome Ken Jones to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy to be here. And uh, I've been struck recently by the spiritual terminology we're using around this event, christening, conversion. And, um, and so I've been thinking about that a little bit, and I wrote a poem. And uh, so the poem is entitled, A Prayer in the Face of the Destroyer. I've come all this way to be a witness for you, for your christening, where you are blessed by the idolatrous so that you can protect them from those who have not been chosen to be in this land of power and glory, that they may fear us and obey us, suffer and die for us, so help us God. I've come not to praise you or your followers, but so that you can see that I do not consent to your presence or your future, for I have had a different kind of christening, one that calls on me to love my neighbor and to treat others as I would like to be treated, and to walk in harmony with the earth, to be one with this sacred creation. I've come to ring the bell of freedom from war, to awaken us from our dreams of conquest, so that we may see the storms coming for us all. We have been tearing at our own mother, earth, in our disconnected addiction to more evermore. We have sown the seeds of our own destruction, and now that withering moment is coming. How can we deny it? Let us move our hearts and spirits so that we see what we have done and how we fit into the web of life. Let us turn this ship around, decommission it, unchristen it. <laughs> Let us protect our children, all of them, children of God rather than our so-called way of life. If I knew how to save us from ourselves, I would sing hallelujah and go home. But alas, I must continue to come to give voice to your victims, to sit in your way, waiting for us all to come to a converted humanity. I've come to call out like a scorned prophet that Christ does not bless your wars and there is not much time left to repent. Thank you, Ken, that was powerful. Well, next, I am going to bring the words of a BIW worker, BIW worker, who cannot be with us today because she is at work. Her name is Patsy Messier. She stood outside the Bath Iron Works with us many times calling for conversion, and she sent a statement for me to read. Good morning all. I have been asked to say a few words, but work prevents me from being there in person, so Lisa is kindly stepping in for me. Thanks, Lisa. Smiley face emoticon. <laughs> the goal here is to give testimony, my personal truth as I see it, for the BIW conversion to happen. I am a 70-year-old woman who is going to retire soon from working at Bath Iron Works for over 32 years, and I have seen a few changes over the years. Sadly, that is mostly after the 9-11 tragedy. And of course, as people get older and wiser, personal changes are inevitable. 
You learn why it has been so difficult to provide the American dream for yourself and your families. Why people and huge companies are denying income inequality, climate change, and racial injustice throughout the world. To me, it boils down to greed. And to change that attitude is like turning a destroyer in the water. It takes patience, hope, and persistence to this task with the goal of making the economy work for all its peoples. It's that important to the whole world. I believe BIW has the capacity with all the equipment and or people that are already there for the conversion to happen pretty easily. All it would take is the will by the people and that's where you come in. You folks are doing important work by protesting. Please continue to stand up proudly because you are all heroes to me. Continue to engage BIW workers. Show them that you are just like them and are protecting the same way of life. Imagine wind turbine platforms, fast trains, or ships of peace, mercy ships, being built at BIW. I can just imagine the worker's pride then. Do the unexpected and keep those beautiful smiles on your faces. Peace, Patsy Messier. Our next speaker is uh, Bill Slavic from Pax Christi, Maine. I thought he would be the most spiritual uh, speaker at the podium today, but I think that there's some competition for that role, so it's good for all of us. Thank you, Bill. Fear and distrust have, have sustained a nuclear weapons standoff at obscene expense. But since the carnage of the world wars, thinking people everywhere have appreciated that war is not only as D-Day veterans will call hell, it is insane. To the contrary, the greed of the military industrial complex owns Washington, including those Maine has sent there. So we have killed directly or by proxy over 20 million fellow humans since and posted our killers in over 500 places worldwide. Nobody plans to attack us, so we build one destroyer after another to interdict Chinese retaliation to a U.S. nuclear first strike when BIW could build windmills. A military is the most polluting operation on the planet. The way of greed and militarism is doomed. Its uncritical support reflects a common indifference to our common humanity that is terrifying. The consequent climate crisis requires what has become alien in corporate boardrooms, financial institutions, and Trump America, recognition of reality. We have suicidally breached the harmony of creation, and our common indifference to the dignity of every person has fostered it. Pax Christi Maine recommends that all read Francis' encyclical Laudato Si to consider the myriad causes of this existential threat, the daunting challenges of ecological restoration and recognition of the common good and the necessary lifestyle changes to lives of sobriety, generosity, humility, community, and love. Awaken, we can read, quote, with admiration and happiness, the mystery of the universe, leading in justice, peace, love, and beauty to the Sabbath of eternity, where scripture tells us all things will be made new. Thank you. Well, before I open it up to questions from the press for our speakers, I would like to mention that tomorrow there is indeed another celebration of a warship. It's at, uh, we will be there on the street on Washington Street in front of the Bath Iron Works shipyard um, at 8 in the morning. Uh, and um, you're welcome to join us there. We hope to have a, a good turnout of people. We have about 26 people who have signed up indicating they're willing to risk arrest. And um, so, thank you. There will be many opportunities to raise your voice and participate if risking arrest is not um, in the cards for you tomorrow. Um, there is a press release giving more details about this action out on the table outside this door. So if you need more info about that, uh, please see me or uh, read the press release. And now um, we have this room until exactly noon. So we have exactly, I think, nine minutes or 10 minutes for uh, journalists that are here with us to pose questions that they would like answered by any of the speakers. And so I'm gonna open the podium up to that. 